Getting some filters to talk about filters and how important they are to you and your house. Getting some filters, some filtery filters. I am Jake Miles with Comfort Air Distributing, and welcome home. If you've seen any of our videos from the past, we talk primarily to HVAC contractors. This series, we're talking to you, the homeowner. We're going to talk about all things HVAC, from IAQ to why your system's not working, why it's important that you change your filters, and all those things that your contractor talks to you about that you really have no idea what the heck they're talking about. So we're going to cover all that and more. So here we go. So after much deliberation, trying to figure out where the best place is to start talking to you, it's you, the homeowner, about HVAC, it seems to me that the most prudent place to start would be filters and IAQ, which stands for Indoor Air Quality. If COVID taught us anything, it's that the stuff in the air can make you really sick. Duh. And filters tend to help out with that. And there's many different kinds of filters in your HVAC system. You have the filters that go in the ductwork, much like this. But you also have more technologically advanced filters, much like this air scrubber. Or, even more advanced, Remy Halos that utilize UV technology to kill all the germs and stuff that's floating around in your house that gives you allergies, makes you sick, all those things. So what's important? What should you care about? Do you need all of it? Do you need any of it? So we're going to talk about that in today's video. So I wanted to start today with just the filter. You've seen these at Walmart, you've seen these at hardware stores. These primarily go somewhere in your ductwork next to your furnace. And these need to be changed out relatively often. And when I say relatively, I'm saying depending on your situation in your own home, if you have a lot of pets or if you're in a really dusty area, something like that, you should probably change these with a lot of frequency. And there's two big primary differences between the filters that you have out there. The material that it's made out of and its thickness. And depending on how your HVAC system is set up, you may need something that's really thick or something that's really thin. Most of the time, and probably the filter you have in your home, is a one inch thick filter. And it's going to look like this one, which is a fiberglass filter, or it's going to look like this one, which is called a pleated filter. And they look different. It's because they are different. The pleated filter, while offers more filtration, it's going to catch, catch more stuff, doesn't flow as much air. While this one, which is the fiberglass filter, you can see it's fairly see-through, offers a lot of airflow, it's not going to catch as much stuff. Filters like what I just showed you typically go in what they call a filter rack, and it's literally just a piece of metal within your ductwork that holds your filter up. Most of the time you should have access to said filter rack, usually by a door or some sort of maybe a slide, something you slide over, slide up, just pull the filter out, put the new filter in, and away you go. So what if you want something more than those filters that I just showed you? What if you want something that's gonna catch those COVID-19 virus-causing bacteria or 
something like E. coli or something in a, on a microscopic level that those filters just aren't going to catch. Well, you might want to go with something like what they call an air scrubber or a UV technologically based filter like a Remy Halo. And what both of these do is they are screwed inside your ductwork. Your contractor will cut a hole in your ductwork, usually on the supply side of your ductwork where the air coming from the furnace is going to travel to all of the registers in your house. That's the supply side. And he's going to install this, one of these two, or something like this. And as the air moves past this filter, it's going to catch all of this stuff so that the air that comes out of your registers is going to be free, or at least mostly free, of all of these contaminants and stuff that make you sick. So what should you choose? Well, a lot of it comes down to your per personal preference or needs. If you live in an area that's dusty, like I mentioned before, or if you live in an area that has a lot of pets, maybe you have a lot of people living in your house, whatever that might be, you may want to go with something more of a UV or an air scrubber type filter. That's going to ensure that not only are you catching all the dust and the danders, but you're also catching all of the disease causing microscopic stuff that's floating around in your conditioned airspace. Now, when you're buying something like an air scrubber or a Remy Halo, uh, the UV based filtration systems, you're going to hear terms like ozone emitting or non ozone emitting. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, if you've ever been in an area that is cooled by a swamp cooler, and you get that musty kind of smell in the air. That is ozone. Some people like the smell of ozone. Some people don't like the smell of ozone. Some people don't like the smell of ozone to the point to where it makes them kind of dizzy and they don't like the way that feels. So ozone, and I can't really explain what's happening on a scientific level. It's science. But in your house, if you like that outdoorsy kind of just rained smell, then go with something that has ozone in it, that emits ozone. If you don't like that and you want, don't want any kind of smell coming out of your registers from the filtration devices that you have, then go with the non-ozone emitting products. One other thing that's very much included with indoor air quality is carbon monoxide detectors. Your house, I'm assuming, is full of appliances that will emit carbon monoxide at dangerous levels. So if you have a gas-fired stove or a gas-fired water heater or a gas-fired furnace, meaning it burns natural gas to create heat, you will want to have some carbon monoxide detectors within your home. There's many different kinds. There's kinds that plug directly into an outlet on the wall. There's kinds that are ceiling mounted, much like a fire detector or smoke detector. Um, there's also kinds that are battery operated that mount directly to a wall somewhere near your appliances. So should those ever emit any kind of dangerous levels of carbon monoxide, it's gonna go off with an alarm, just like a smoke detector lets you know that you need to get out of the house. Carbon monoxide is smellless? Is smellless a word? It doesn't have a smell, that's what I'm saying. So what makes that dangerous is that you're not gonna smell it, you're not gonna know that dangerous levels are building up into your house, and nobody wants that because the end result, of course, is no, nobody, I'm sure you can imagine. We, we don't want that. So, carbon monoxide detectors. Very important to IAQ. So you're ready to talk about IAQ with your HVAC contractor. And you want them to evaluate your situation and for them to suggest the best solution for you in your home. 
In the description below is a website that I want you to go to. It's called reampropartners.com. And within that website, you will find a list of pro partners that can talk to you in depth about all of these products that I just briefly went over and the importance that it is to you, the homeowner. So visit that website below. Make sure that you like and subscribe to this brand new series to Comfort Air Productions. And we'll be back with more to talk to you.